Hello everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Power Toys Power Rename. If you haven't heard of Power Toys, you can get it by going to github.com slash Microsoft slash Power Toys. It's made by Microsoft and it has many tools that are meant for developers to help you save time. You can click on release on the right hand side over here and download Power Toys setup and get the executable file. Once you've downloaded and installed it, you'll have many extra features in Windows, including Power Rename in File Explorer. I'll show you how this works. In this folder, I have a bunch of lecture and lab files that are sorted, whether it's a lecture or lab at the left-hand side, it has the day and the month afterwards, and this is not very great if you want to be able to sort these by when they occurred, because if the day comes first, then sorting would not be very useful, and also we have some that say lab and some that say lecture, and I don't want them to be separated when I sort these. So I'm going to want to rename these files to have year, month, day, because if I have year first, then the ones that were in 2020 will come before the ones in 2021. And then the month, because I want the ones in January to come before the ones in February, for example. And then I'll have the day of the month, followed by whether it's a lecture or lab, which will come after that. Now to do this, the first thing I want to do is make sure that there's leading zeros so that it's all consistent sizes of the dates. Because if they have a, um, if some start with a zero and some don't, it will not be in the correct order. So first I'm going to right click on these files and click power rename. Now it shows me a list of all the files and what they will look like after they're renamed. Currently I don't have any search text, so it's not going to rename anything. Now in order to rename something, I can type in over here, let's say lab, and I want to replace that with um, exercise if I wanted to. It will show me that it'll change these ones to say exercise, but that's not really what I want to do right now. Right now I want to add zeros before any digit that's not preceded by another digit. So in order to do I'll have to turn on use regular expressions. By default this is off, but if you check this box, I'll be able to use a regular expression. Now if you don't know what regular expressions are, you can watch my video on regular expressions, which I'll put a link to in the description. So now first, we can type backslash D to match a digit. If it's preceded by a dot, we can say backslash dot to make the character dot, and then a digit, and we can say followed by another dot. Then what we want to replace this with is a dot, followed by a zero, followed by a one, and then a dot. We also want to put this in a caption group, so we'll keep that in there. So now all the ones that have a month without the zero before it, we replace with the version with a zero before it. We still have some of these like where the day is um, a one digit number. So we can, instead of saying dot here, put um, space or dot by putting a space and then a vertical bar and then a dot. And then instead of a dot here, we can use the first caption group, and this will be the second caption group. So we have dollar one to match the space or dot, a zero, and then the dollar two to match the digit, and then another dot. And now we can see that all of these have preceding zeros when they did not previously. So you can click rename, and you can see just like that is renamed all these files. Uh, so now it looks like some of these ended up not having the zero because it's, it's only matching one occurrence. There's actually a setting to match all occurrences, which I could have enabled in order to do that. So let's say match all occurrences, although it's just going to change that one, and we can say rename. So now what I want to do is put the year and I noticed that the first, the first month that this occurred in was October of 2020, and the last month was in January of 2021. So anything that starts with a 1 in the month is going to be in 2020, and anything that starts with a 0 is going to be 2021. So I can check for a dot followed by a 0, and these are going to be my 2021 files. And I don't want to replace that with nothing. I want to replace it with the having the year before it. 
But we can also say, okay, let's say we'll match the lab or lecture at the beginning, and we'll put that in a caption group so we can access it later. Then we'll have the day of the month backslash D plus, they'll match one or more numbers. And then we have a dot, and then we can have a zero, and then a backslash D, and then a dot PDF. And what we want to replace this with is, let's say, 2021 dot, um, and then we'll say, let's put this in a caption group over here, the zero dot, that's going to be the month. So we're going to say dollar three because the third caption group, and then dollar two to match the day of the month. Put a dot in here, and let's say we want to say the first caption group, lab or lecture after that, followed by dot PDF. So now it will re rename all of these ones that have a zero in the month to have 2021.01.06 lecture.pdf. Or if it's a lab, it'll say lab.pdf. I'm going to click rename. And now I just have to rename the rest of these to have 2020. Now everything that starts with an L and not 2021 is going to be something from 2020. So we're going to highlight these, click power rename. And we're going to want to replace that with a 1, and we'll change this to 2020. And now everything that starts with a 1 in the month, which is everything that we selected, is going to have 2020 as the year, and then it will have the month and the day. Click Rename, and there we go. Now if we sort this by name, we get them in order. Of Here's October of 2020, November, December, January. And that is exactly what we wanted. And not only that, but when you have two things that happen on the same day, such as a lab and a lecture, they appear next to each other because it's the same day. Now going back to the options you have here, we've got use regular expressions. That's very useful if you want to um, do complex replacements like what I did here, where you want to match two different terms and not just one specific word. Uh, match all occurrences or replace all of the occurrences of something instead of just the first one. Case sensitive, if you want it to match lowercase and uppercase the same way, um, instead of having to write them separately here, you can just say whether it's uppercase or lowercase, it should be matched. Enumerate items, we'll put um, the number afterwards. So, if I, for example, select all of these and I say enumerate items. Let me make sure to um, actually put a search term that will get matched. So you'll see that all of the things that get renamed will get renamed with a number afterwards. So it'll make the replacement and also number them in the order that they're replaced in. Now item name only means it'll only check the item name and not the extension. If I want to only change the extension of files, meaning the .pdf part, I can say item extension only. Um, also, you can exclude certain folders or files from this replacement if I wanted to. And you can also do transformations, like making it all uppercase or all lowercase, or title case if you want to capitalize each word. So for example, if I wanted to place it with, the, with lecture lowercase, it would not allow me to because it wants, it'll always capitalize every word if I have my title case, but if I turn that off, I'm able to replace that just fine. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. If you learned something, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!